Welcome to episode 8 of Digital Innovation Talks. My name is Katarina Reis and I will be your host for today. I am Project Officer at Porto Business School based in Porto, Portugal. Porto Business School is the business school of the University of Porto focused on executive education, customized programs, applied research, consultancy and funded projects. I collaborate with the African EU project as a project manager and a program designer. For the ones who watch us for the first time, African EU is a project funded by the Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program that aims to create the first transcontinental networking academy to support African and European digital innovation hubs in capacity building, knowledge sharing, networking, collaborations, joint projects and venture development. The project is implemented from February 2021 until January 2024 and involves four partners from Africa and seven partners from Europe. Digital Innovation Talks is, is a theme of our African Vidcast series. For the ones wondering what a Vidcast is, it is simply a podcast that contains video content. So the series includes 12 monthly episodes from April 2022 until March 2023, and each episode will explore a different topic related to the European and African digital innovation hubs and startup ecosystems. So let's start. The topic of our episode today is gender mainstreaming for African digital innovation hubs, how to adopt gender aware well practices within our work. Let me introduce to our amazing guest today, Paris Masindi, Programs Lead of Outbox Hub in Uganda. Paris has over six years experience with working with entrepreneurs and startups. She currently oversees organizations venture programs towards supporting entrepreneurs in Uganda and Africa at large. Welcome Paris. Tell us about more about yourself and Outbox Hub. Hey, thank you Katarina for that introduction. Um, I'll briefly speak about Outbox. Um, so Outbox is located in Uganda and it it's, seeks to support early stage um, entrepreneurs by providing them with uh, infrastructure like um, shared office spaces, um, technical trainings on the programs, and what Outbox seeks to do is to leverage partnerships with uh, different organizations and development partners to, to run programs and, and provide access to expertise, market and funding opportunities for entrepreneurs in our ecosystem. So like I said, we are located in Uganda and currently I, I serve as a programs lead where I lead on the ventures department, which is like um, the department that supports entrepreneurs or our entrepreneurship ventures or initiatives. Thank you, Paris. Very interesting, your work. Um, so during the last few weeks, we got in touch with our community and followers and we collected some interesting questions for you. So let's see what the audience wants to know. Uh, so the first question, how relevant are gender aware practices and why? Okay, so when we're looking at gender at large, we have to look at three uh, key areas or key three items. We have the gender norms, we have the gender roles, and the gender relations. So the gender roles are the things that the women or the men or the girls and the boys are expected to do in the different societies. So here we have to look at um, societies in different countries, regions, because if you look at Uganda, the roles or the things that are expected of women might be different from what is expected of of women stay in a different country, say like the USA or Portugal or any other region. So the reason why we would say gender awareness um, in terms of the practice is very, very important is, is it, it determines or it contributes to how far the entrepreneurs or the people in our society take part in the initiatives they're running or in the work that we are doing. So we have to be very, very cognizant of the, of the different gender issues or practices that are, in, that are existing in the different regions that are running our programs, our initiatives. Thank you. Um, let's then move to the question number two. Can you give us a few examples of these practices, so gender aware practices? Okay, so, in, so I'm going to speak around the workplace setting. Um, so in the workplace, make sure that there is um, awareness of gender. We make sure that uh, things like safeguarding policies, 
uh, social harassment policies are in place just to make sure that people in in their work environment feel safe and feel respected and feel heard. Um, there's also the aspect of equal pay in making sure that just because one is a male or just because one is a female, they're not entitled to something or they're not entitled to a better pay just because of their sex or their gender. Um, another practice that exists is, for example, um, where a woman or uh, let's say a woman would earn during would earn her pay even when she's away on maternity leave, or maybe she's taking sick leave because probably she's facing um, serious menstrual serious menstrual um, pain or something. She'll still get paid leave. So these are some of the practices that exist at the moment to make sure that women and men are able to actually participate in a place of work. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, so let's move to question number three. How is the situation in today's African digital innovation hubs considering gender mainstreaming? Um, so when it comes to how, I would say that um, currently or what we've seen so far is that the female particip participation in different initiatives is a bit low. And so what, um, for example, in Uganda, what the country has gone ahead to do is to roll out programs that are open to supporting women and where we say, for example, one twenty percent of women participation, um, making sure that, that the outreach message is very targeted and making sure that it addresses the barriers that women are facing or that are limiting them from taking part in these initiatives. Um, we have um, institutions like banks that offer financing that is specifically for women, just to encourage them to actually participate and take part in different or benefit from the different offers or offerings that are happening in the country at large. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving to question number four. What are the most relevant barriers for women in digital innovation hubs daily work? Mm -hmm. So around the barriers, I would say is um, best, uh, one of the things I would say is around the mindset of the women. Uh, most of the women do not have a growth mindset, and this, this is because from from inception or from the time when they, they actually set foot on earth, the way they are brought up is to, you know, always be at the back of the man. So you, you're brought up knowing that your, your role is actually to help or to serve, and so you never have this, this thing with you where you're thinking, I'm, I'm going to be a leader or anything like that. So it's around the mindset. Um, and so this affects how they, they, they relate at work, this affects how they even think about going to look for employment. Some of them are, of course, very comfortable with just doing the bare minimum. Um, yeah, so I would say that the most relevant story I would say is around um, the mindset, but also when you look at the current norms or society expectations around the women, that would also be a barrier. Um, where, for example, women are expected to, to, to say, um, support at home or domestic um, chores at home. So, for example, the woman has a nine to five job that requires her to be at work nine to five. But however, when she gets home, she's still expected to be able to attend to her home or domestic needs, making sure that, for example, the children have eaten, um, the husband has food to eat. But remember, all of them went to work, they were there from nine to five. And there's still some more expected from her even at home. So these are barriers that I, I believe also limit women in how they participate in the different initiatives. Because at the end of the day, she has to look at at um, her home as her priority and making sure that everything at home is okay before she even comes to take part in your program or take part in, in whatever is going on outside home. Thank you. Um, moving to question number five. Aren't initiatives specifically targeted at women a way of promoting positive discrimination? Um, so I would say no, um, because I think it, 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 we would say it, it, it depends on how you, you do your outreach and how you message this particular initiative. So make sure that you don't feel or you don't discriminate especially against the men, you make sure that the men are involved, especially around um, where the women you're talking about or you're targeting have families. So you make sure that the men are involved. But what you're trying to do is drive the mindset and making sure that 
the women feel that they can take up more or, or, or be out there without feeling like they are oppressing their husband. So for example, the man has to still feel respected. And so for example, if you're running a program like which is targeted towards women who have homes, you have to, to remember to involve the men, but also in the same way, remind women that they have roles at home to, to adhere to. They, they do not have to feel or start thinking that now they are superior because they, they are gaining extra skills and start being disrespectful. So it's about how you, the approach you take in, in doing your outreach and making sure that you don't leave out the men, uh, you find ways of involving the men, and so there, there will be no discrimination. Makes sense, thank you. Uh, regarding the next question, I think that you have already uh, mentioned, but just to, to do this uh, little overview, which are the main gender aware policies that a company or organization should adopt? Um, gender aware policies. Um, yeah, so like I said, you, you have to look at the three things around the norms, relations, and roles of, of, of gender in your community or in your society. And from there on, as you're developing policies, um, say for example, safeguarding uh, documents or sexual harassment policies and such, you have to make sure that uh, it's in alignment with what is expected in your particular society. And also, of course, in agreement with what is known or agreed in your society. Okay. Uh, question number seven. How can the digital innovation hubs build a better understanding regarding gender equality among employees? Mm -hmm. Among employees? Um, yeah, so when you have policies in place, um, like for example, safeguarding, sexual harassment, then if you're able to deliver um, trainings or capacity building sessions to, to your different employees and empower them on why this is important, so that they're able to also relate to the entrepreneurs in a way that they're coming from an informed um, point of view. Yeah, so I think you just have to make sure that the policies are in place and beyond them, uh, deliver some training sessions on them and also once in a while, just checking and confirm that actually these policies are being implemented in the organization. Thank you. Uh, do you think that uh, is it possible for a digital innovation hub to establish a framework for gender sensitive language? How can this be done? Um, so, yeah, I believe it's possible. Um, I know that there is a framework that is used to making sure that. Um, there is gender mainstreaming or, gender, or there is some gender sensitivity in what you're doing. And we have to look at the three, we have to look at three key things. We have the individual themselves, so here we're looking at the woman or the man, and then we have the community or the family. So depending on what you're trying to achieve, and then the other is around the institution or the formal or informal. So there are key things or key questions you have to ask yourself around these three key areas to make sure that the framework you're establishing is are relevant to your community and your society. And so I believe it's very, very possible. You just have to follow a framework that works and you have to look at those three key pillars, which is the individual, the community or the family and the institution both um, formal and informal because all these inform how your society runs. Yeah. Thank you. One last question. Uh, is gender mainstreaming more feasible in the digital innovation hub sector or in other business sectors in Africa? Yeah, so I would say it's, it's very feasible, both in the DIHS and also in, in the different sectors um, in Africa and even, I think, the whole world in, at large. So I don't think it's limited to, to sector in particular, as long as you, you apply the framework that works and, and make sure that your framework is in adherence to what is known in your society. And of course, there are some known norms that we know that may need a change. But if you apply those different pillars in your framework development, then I think you're able to apply a gender mainstream in all sectors. Thank you so much, Paris, for this insightful analysis of gender aware practices and approaches uh, in digital innovation hubs in Africa. Uh, any final input or comments that you would like to make? Um, maybe my last uh, parting shot would be around just making sure that whatever initiatives we develop or whatever um, 
framework we are putting out there, we have to make sure that the women are involved, but also not leaving out the men, because once you leave out the men, then it becomes an issue of discrimination. So yeah, just making sure that the simple things that we, we may think are simple, especially in Africa, where, um, for example, women are to be home and provide for their families, and also the pressure that is put on men in, say, being the provider. So those things, uh, they, they may seem irrelevant, but they actually affect how the women or the different genders interact with different initiatives um, at the DH level or at, at, uh, at, at large in the country or in the continent. Thank you. So that was episode eight of Digital Innovation Talks, the African EU VidCast series. Thank you so much for watching and do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media and stay up to date. Stay tuned for the next episode. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you.